What's up gang, Evil here. Hey, I'm going to be covering a subject today that I don't usually do. And this is something, uh, and that's, well, I guess, FPV quads. Um, this is something that I've been doing for quite a while. Um, but it's not really stuff that I've really covered on my channel. You guys who follow me on Facebook might see I post a little video zooming around my house or whatever. Uh, but this isn't really something that I've covered on my channel. Due to the whole lockdown thing and just, you know, having some spare parts laying around, I decided to... Uh, build another one. Uh, components a little bit um, of this quad and uh, just to kind of as an overview and then we'll, we'll start putting it together. So <clears throat> um, the main brain of the quad as well as the kind of power distribution um, all the uh, all the components that make the thing work are in this. This is a flight controller. This happens to be a beta flight uh, F4 all-in-one. There are, there are newer versions of this out but I had this laying around um, in my current quads, this is the flight co controller I'm using, and it's really good. Um, so uh, that's what I'm going to be using here. So um, the VTX, or what they call the video transmitter, this is the part that sends video um, from your camera. Your camera shoots video to this thing, this thing transmits it to your goggles. So this is what allows you to be able to see uh, and hear what the quad is doing. So that's, uh, that's what a VTX is. Um, Here's the camera I'm using. This is a Runcam Swift 2. Um, it's just a kind of a little security camera. Um, it's programmable. It has an OSD, an on screen display if you don't have one with your flight controller. It has a mic built in, which I really like, so you can hear what the quad is doing uh, when it's out of, uh, out of earshot, which is nice. Um, I've run Runcam on most of my stuff, um, and they're always, they've always been pretty good. But for the motors, I'm using the Emax RS2205S 2300 KVs. Um, it's a motor, obviously, that's more suited to 4S, um, but I've used, been using these on my quads now for two years. They have been great, great motors. So um, I kind of take the military approach on these things to, and this actually happened to me last weekend, um, since I run uh, the same setup on all my quads. Um, this actually, I broke this antenna on this tramp, um, and then on my other quad, I burned out an ESC, so both quads were down, but because I'm running them both set up the same, I was able to pull the tramp off of one quad, the quad with the burnt ESC, put it back together, and go back flying, um, and then I only had one down quad, so this quad's going to be exactly the same, it's going to be using all the same components, and uh, this is the RSXR, the one is RXSR. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz re receiver with telemetry so you get all the telemetry streaming down from the quad to your radio which is nice um, plus these are cheap like 30 bucks for a tiny little radio or receiver and then ESC's along with my whole military approach to my hardware um, these are a BL Heli S uh, ESC which is not the newest technology that's BL Heli 32 um, but S is cheaper and it has the functionality I want like uh, turtle mode things like that So a lot of people probably wonder why I'm running BL Heli S, but it's because these ESCs are 12 bucks a pop um, And it's the same ESC I'm running on my older quads. So if I need to swap something out the stuff will work um, I didn't talk about the frame um, I've been using impulse RC frames. Uh, they're kind of the industry leader one of the industry leaders um, but I didn't really want to drop a hundred bucks on a frame this time around. Um, there's this cool thing I heard about called uh, the Source One. So those of you who don't know, in the FPV community, there is a huge amount of piracy that goes on. People will do R&D and design a nice frame and sell it for 80 bucks, 90 bucks, and then Banggood will come along and sell the same frame for 20 bucks. And that really sucks for the people who spend time designing and testing. Uh, so they don't make any money on it. So the Source One is an open source frame project. That's I don't know how many iterations is in. This is a V3, um, but the design is free and it's completely open source. It's designed by the community. So when you buy this, all you're buying is the machine time and the material. So this frame, which is an awesome frame, is like twenty-six dollars. So amazing. If you're building on a budget, that is a fantastic frame. Um, and the TBS Source One project is uh, a really worthwhile project. I really, I really like what they're doing to kind of combat all the uh, piracy and, and whatnot that goes on. Uh, and then, uh, as you can see on my quads, I run 
a uh, GoPro, GoPro session. Um, this is another GoPro session. Um, instead for the reverb, it fits the, uh, the source. Um, and even though I 3D print my, my stuff, I don't 3D print in uh, TPU. Um, Brain 3D uh, makes designs for all the popular um, frames. And for what it would cost me to buy a roll of TPU and then go through the headache of tuning for it, um, it's easy to just drop $18 on one and, and have them sent to me. And they do a good job. So um, that's pretty much it for the overview. Um, this stuff sounds super complicated. Um, and it is a little bit, but once you kind of dig down into it, it's not. Um, these guys are the manufacturer of my flight controller, so they give you a nice pin out of where to solder everything. Um, so I'll be following that to uh, get this guy going. So I'm going to crack some boxes open, mount some motors, mount some ESCs. We'll tin up the uh, pads on this flight. Okay, so we had a little hold up. I had to wait for these guys to get here, which are little vibration isolating mounts for the uh, flight controller to sit on. This keeps uh, high frequency vibration from the motors transferring up into the gyro. Again, I'm using a 30 amp uh, Lumineer um, BL Heli S ESCs. Really tiny. Uh, these do not have a BS BEC installed. Um, they're purpose built um, quadcopter ESCs because um, we're going to be powering everything from elsewhere so we don't need that extra crap on the ESC. Um, right now I'm uh, wiring out or measuring the wiring from the ESCs to the flight controller so I just lay the flight controller in place kind of run the wires where they're going to go. All right, I actually have the flight controller on here upside down because the solder pads for the ESCs are on the bottom so I'm flipping the ESC upside down and we're going to solder these on here this thing they start turning into a mess of wires in a hurry and there we go one more ESC to go all right all the power for the ESCs are wired up the flight controller has been flipped over now I'm going to trim and attach the signal wires for the ESCs I put down a little bit of servo tape uh, to put in between the carbon and the ESC helps isolate it a little bit and obviously keeps it from grounding out <clears throat> all right there's all the ESC's wired it's really just going to come down to installing the VTX and the receiver and hooking the camera up so I just got to solder to some of these pinouts here so so we're going to install some motors now uh, I got the motors bolted up I'm getting ready to uh, uh, strip these wires and solder them to the ESC Um, here I'm just I'm wiring the harness from the uh, VTX or the uh, FPV camera to the VTX harness. So some of them just get connected directly together, and then the signal wires and power and everything will come directly from the FC. So I'll be uh, soldering these together and then soldering these to the flight controller. All right, I got the uh, immersion tramp VTX installed. Got everything soldered down to the board right there. That tiny little guy that is smaller than my thumbnail is a 16 channel receiver. Um, so, getting ready, just going to solder that on here, and we're going to be ready to. I'm waiting on some mounts to show up so I can get this stuff sitting where I want inside the, uh, the frame, but uh, once that's done, we'll be hooking this up to beta flight and programming. And yes, when you get old, you have to wear dumb shit like this. Finally got the uh, receiver wired in, got the telemetry hooked up, um, stuck some hot glue down there in between where the telemetry wires, because they're super close and I'm just paranoid about something getting in there and bridging that gap. So stuck some hot glue in there to kind of isolate that a little bit. And then uh, I got these cool little things off of eBay. It's really awesome. He sold, sold me four of these. 20 by 20 or 30 by 30 stack kind of shelves 
and uh, he threw in a set of props, which is awesome because like those are the props that I run anyway. So I was just thinking the other day, I'm like, I need to get a new set of props for this thing, but he sent them to me, so much appreciated for that, sir. All right, so I'm definitely not a electrician, but this is an important step. So you're soldering a bunch of components together here. Um, and you want to make sure that you haven't dropped solder somewhere inadvertently. Um, a piece of solder pops off and lands somewhere inconvenient. Um, basically, we're going to check for continuity. And we're going to make sure all of our grounds uh, have continuity. So negative lead to battery negative, continuity. Ground the other ESC. Ground to other ESC, ground to ESC number four. I'm gonna check the grounds on my camera. Um, and those are all, uh, have continuity. So now we're gonna keep this thing grounded and we're gonna check for continuity on all of the, well, all of them that I can, um, other components that I've soldered in here. Um, and if we have continuity between one of those things, something is grounded out somewhere, somewhere in my wiring or whatnot. So, covering this up but so I hit the negative on my camera I have continuity hitting power nothing uh, signal S bus nothing negative on my uh, VTX continuity power nothing video uh, out nothing video in nothing um, so seems like I'm not gonna have any issues here um, with anything anything grounded out uh, so if stuff lights up that it shouldn't um, then you know you're gonna need to go looking for a problem um, I also uh, take some compressed air you can use a compressor or canned air and I just spray it out real good because sometimes when you're soldering that solder will pop and the little blobs will just land wherever um, so they can land in a bad spot on the motherboard um, and that's why uh, you're checking for stuff that's grounded out uh, before we plug it in <clears throat> another thing that's handy to have and you can buy these or you can make them this is what they call a smoke stopper so this plugs in between your quad and your battery and generally you see the light come on a little bit but if this if this light comes on <clears throat> when you plug in then something is grounded out somewhere um, and the bulb gives it somewhere to go so and they call it a smoke stopper because it will stop from frying most of the time will stop from frying ESC flag controller or whatever so you can buy these at race day quads or get FPV um, or you can just make one like I did you just break in the positive connection with that light bulb <clears throat> if nothing is grounded when you plug it in the bulb should stay out um, I do find that once the ESCs are plugged in when you plug it in they'll it will light briefly but then it will go out or it may be very dim but if that thing lights up bright then uh, you're grounded somewhere um, and you need to find out where it is so you don't burn up your nice expensive quadcopter you just built. Anyway, um, we're about ready for the first power up on this. I'm going to finish putting this stack together and mounting stuff down. Um, then I need to fire it up and bind the receiver. Alright, here we go. I've uh, taken the VTX and unplugged the camera. I am leaving the receiver hooked up uh, just to see in case anything goes wrong. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, we're looking good. Smoke stopper is out. See the receiver's powered on. See the FCE's powered on. Heard the uh, fire up tones on the uh, ESCs and the motors. So we're looking good so far. I'm going to go ahead and uh, power this off and then I'm going to bind this receiver. And blue Two, means we're in S bus mode, and green means that we're bound. Uh, before I power up the transmitter, it's always a good idea to put an uh, uh, antenna on. I've heard conflicting stories about that hurting things and not hurting things. Um, I typically run the uh, TBS Triumph um, just because it's tough as nails um, right now during the pandemic. You can't find them, so this is a TBS Triumph Pro. So I'm hoping this is as rugged. So I'm just starting to button it up a little bit, um, tacking some stuff down. Got to put the zip tie around the battery lead here, so if it ejects the battery, it doesn't yank the pads off of the flight controller. 
All right, we're getting close here. I'm uh, trying to figure out my antenna. Um, and I've seen this done on a few different quads where they stick a zip tie on these arms and then shrink wrap those antennas out there. <clears throat> it's a little bit hard to get that set up with this uh, receiver set up. Um, I think the Reverb has a much nicer antenna solution. Um, and it has actual guides for antenna tubes so you can actually route them up and away from the props. I've never had a uh, prop strike with these but as this is more of a budget frame you got to kind of come up with your own solution. Alright guys here's my little disclaimer here. Um, this quad is ready to be plugged into Betaflight. Uh, make sure anytime you do this you do this with the props off of the quad. No exceptions. Uh, so once you're plugged up with USB, um, you're going to see a graphical representation of your quadcopter in Betaflight. Um, and this one I'm showing here is just an overview. This isn't to show you how to do it. This is just showing you what it takes to get one going. So uh, your hardware and everything is going to be completely different than mine. Um, I'm just trying to give you a broad overview of what it looks like to set one up. Um, so, you know, it may be easier than you think. It may be harder than you think. Uh, it's just a complete upfront of everything to get one of these things in the air. Um, all your ports in here, um, these are basically all the hardware ports out of the flight controller. I didn't have to change anything here. Um, it detected it and set up everything just fine. Um, <clears throat> this configuration tab, um, you do have to configure uh, the ESCs for what D-Shot uh, they're using. Um, you can turn your accelerometer off. This is where you select your receiver, the protocol it's using. This kind of stuff, you'll watch a lot of videos. Um, there's a whole, you know, once you build the quad, then there's the whole thing of getting everything configured. But um, there's not a heck of a lot. You'll just watch some videos. It'll be a little bit overwhelming at first. Um, uh, the power tab uh, allows you to configure voltage monitoring as well as uh, uh, calibrate the measurement of how much power you're burning. PID tuning, I left all this completely stock. This is, you can totally go down a rabbit hole on this stuff on tuning the quad. Um, Betaflight 4.1, Betaflight 4.1 is uh, the out of the box rate or uh, PID profiles are amazing. I couldn't believe how well it flew right out of the box. I didn't touch any of the PIDs. I bumped the rates up a little bit. That's it. Um, that's all I did. Um, this is a receiver tab. Um, this lets you see uh, you know, so you can map all your inputs, make sure everything is correct. Um, this modes tab, this is where you set up, um, like all your flight modes. Flight um, mode two, flight mode aggro, flight mode two, flight mode normal. Anyway, that's how you, that's how you map your, uh, your modes so that the quad knows what it's going to do. Um, you can set up other things like beepers. Um, and this is the big one for me, which is turtle mode. Um, if you crash the quad somewhere where you can't get to it, that turtle mode will let you flip it over and get it back, hopefully. Uh, motors tab, this is where you, uh, on some firmwares, this is where you calibrate your ESCs. It also allows you to monitor, test all the motors individually, um, as well as make sure everything's spinning in the right direction. Again, make sure your props are off here. This OSD tab, this is where you set up, this is the piece that you see inside your goggles, so you can turn on all the things you'd like to be displayed. Um, all I run is RSSI, which is uh, receiver strength, uh, battery voltage, my arm time, and then I have the warnings that pop up, obviously. And then I have my flight mode at the top, top right, usually. Uh, you can go crazy in here with all kinds of different stuff. I just run kind of a bare minimum setup. And I leave this corner blank uh, because my um, uh, immersion uh, rapid fire puts uh, its RSSI. Uh, OSD stuff up there. Um, I don't have anything configured for your video transmitter. That's how you can set up smart audio so you can change all your frequencies and whatnot. And then black box, black box is exactly what it sounds like. Just like on a real airplane, black box, uh, it logs all the telemetry and everything during the flight. Also useful for tuning if you're having trouble tracking down a problem. And CLI tab stands for command line interface. Um, this uh, actually allows you to modify the text of your flight controller's configuration. Um, everything in the GUI here is recorded in this file somewhere, so any modifications, tweaks, or if there's anything actually inside the GUI that you can't do, it can be done via command line interface um, in this tab. And you can also back up and restore configurations from here as well, which is quite useful. Um, so that's Betaflight in a nutshell. Uh, I'll disconnect from there. And, oops. 
didn't want that. The other thing I was going to show you guys is the BL Heli configurator. You have to, oops, my bad. Um, this, uh, the flight controller is a pass through, so you're able to uh, access the firmware um, on all your ESCs. Um, on BL Heli S, like I'm running, um, it's kind of not supported anymore, so 16.7 is the last firmware. But if you pick up something that doesn't have the latest firmware, or you can load custom firmwares on these to make them do different things. Um, but if you have to reflash uh, your ESCs, this is the program you use to do it. Uh, like I say, mine are out of the box. I didn't have to touch them. All I did was jump in here. Oh, you do have to, if you have to reverse them. Um, like I had two motors spin in the wrong direction. So you go in here and you change the direction that they're rotating. And then you uh, right set up. And it that makes sure all your stuff spin in the right way. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, from here, uh, once you make sure all your inputs and everything, you're ready to take it out for a test hover. Test hovered it, seems to be okay. Um, threw the camera in it. We'll uh, take it out for its first flight in earnest. Try some acro. Low battery. Flight mode, acro. Oh yeah, did a little bit of tweaking on the rates last night, uh, just because it felt a little bit sluggish. It's an out-of-the-box tune on the uh, Betaflight 4.1 firmware. Feels almost as good as my tweak tune. Not quite there yet with the feel. bad though. That flies nice. It's a little bit heavier than my reverbs. Video is nice and clear. I was afraid it had some noise, but cap is doing good. Oh yeah, this battery sagging like crazy. It feels a little bit heavier than my reverb. It seems to, you know, I'm not, not quite as confident with it. Whoa. I like it. It's a little bit cleaner than my other quads as far as the wiring. Anyway, there you have it, guys. A TBS Source 1 build for you non quadcopter people. Just kind of get an idea of what it's all about. So that's it. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please subscribe if you would. I'll catch you on the next one.